So looking ahead to paper one, let's have a sesh on year one multiple choice question practice. Let's go. AQA unit one, A-level business. So here's question one. Read the question, pause the video. Okay, let's get the answer to question one. So the answer is D, public limited companies. If we think about the question, ordinary shares, well, they will apply to private limited companies and public limited companies, but not A and B, so it's not them. Then trade on the stock exchange, giving the clue that it must be public, not private. So the answer is D. Let's move on to question two. So read the question, pause the video. So let's get the answer to question two. So the answer to question two is A, an increase in the rate of interest. Clearly, if interest rates go up, that is bad if you're highly geared, if you've got lots of debt, because it's going to increase your costs. And also, if you get increase in interest rates, then it encourages consumers to save more and spend less. Spend less means a decrease in demand. So the answer is A. Question three, read the question, pause the video. So the answer to question three is D. Key things here, A and B are obviously nonsense. So it's between C and D. If it were the current share price, that would be the market cap, the market capitalization. So if it's ordinary share capital, it's based on the original share price. So the answer is D. Let's move on. Question four, read the question, pause the video. So the answer to question four is B. B is the answer. A, nonsense. C, nonsense. D, nonsense. So of course, public, public limited companies, they usually pay. They don't have to. That's why it says usually. They usually pay ordinary shareholders a share of or a cut of the profits. And of course, that's called dividends. Let's move on to question five. So read the question. Pause the video. Let's get the answer to question five. So the answer to question five is C, the suppliers. So the suppliers will be faced with the financial loss here. Trick, I suppose, was B in shareholders getting confused with limited liability. But remember, they have limited liability, so it's clearly not going to be them. So it has to be the other business, which in this case is the suppliers. So five is C. Let's move on to the final question, number six. So number six, read the question, pause the video. And the answer to question six is B. One is true, two is false. So private limited companies, yes, they are usually in the private sector. Straightforward, so one is true, but two is just to avoid that confusion between public sector organizations, such as the NHS, which are obviously financed by the government, and public limited companies are not usually public sector organisations. So two is false, so therefore the answer is B. So after you finish section A, where you'll have 15 multiple choice questions, it will be likely followed up by two calculation questions, both probably worth four marks. So to ensure you're refined and practiced and rehearsed for that, click the card up there where you get access to the numeracy practice playlist. Loads of calculation questions, 20 plus questions there to practice to get used to the style of question you will get in paper one. Two, high level business. So read the question, pause the video. So the answer to this question, we've got high concern for people and also high concern for production or the task. So of course this has to be a team leader. So a team leader A is the answer. Let's move on to question two. So read the question, pause the video. So the answer to this question is C, country club. So high concern for people. But less of a concern for the task, of course, the answer is C, country club. Let's move on to the next question on stakeholder mapping. So pause the video. 
So the answer to this question, if you are the most likely to influence the management decision making, it probably indicates that you have a high amount of stakeholder power and of course a high amount of interest, which means that um, C must be the answer. Let's move on to question four. So pause the video. So remembering your talent management continuum, of course, if you are right to the left hand side of that where you are not delegating at all, you have the most authority, then that is of course the tell side. Um, and then as you'd work your way through the, um, the talent management continuum, of course, you'd move to a more um, democratic position. But most authority, of course, has to be D, tell. Let's move on to question five. So pause the video. The answer to this question is going to be about thinking through management styles, which of course are related to the Blake uh, Mouton grid. And we're looking really, if it's hard HRM, you're treating your employees as a resource. So therefore, it probably can, it's it means there's less concern for people. So we're looking for those, those management styles that have least concern for people. Of course, it can't be team leader because that has concern for people. It can't be country club because that would indicate concern for people. So it leaves only one possible answer, which is company C. Session AQA, unit three, A-level business. So question one, read it, pause the video. Okay, so the answer to this is clearly C, people being one of those three extra or extended marketing mix factors, being also beyond people, of course you could have physical environment or you could have process. A, B and D are absolute waffle, so it's not those. The answer to one is C. Let's move on to question two. So pause the video. Try and work it out. Okay, so to answer this question, you simply need to take the 770 million in 2020 and times that by 1.05, and that should come to 808.5 million. So the answer to two is C. Let's move on to question three. So pause the video, try and work out the answer. Okay, so the answer to this question is A. So A is the answer. The reason why is because we've seen that 10% increase in the price leads to a fall in quantity demanded. Increase leads to a fall. That's clearly a negative correlation. So it has to be A or B. The second part of that is the elasticity. Well, of course, you've got a 10% increase in the price and a much more dramatic fall in the quantity demanded, 35%. So clearly that's very sensitive, very elastic. So of course it has to be price elastic demand. That means the answer is A. So let's move on to question four. Pause the video, try and work it out. Okay. So for this question, we can see that consumer incomes have increased. That's to do with income elasticity of demand. If they have increased, then you'd hope you'd have a positive income elasticity of demand. So that eliminates A and it eliminates C. So it has to be B or D. So now we need to move on to the price elasticity of demand component. And we can see that prices are increased by 10%. So if you're increasing your prices, well, you don't want to have much sensitivity in terms of your PED. So you want it to be inelastic. It's going to be have to be the inelastic number, which is minus 0.5. So the answer must be inelastic price elasticity of demand and also a positive income elasticity demand, which makes the answer D. Let's move on to the final question, question five. So question five. Read the question, pause the video. Okay, so the two statements 
Number one, penetration pricing. Well, penetration pricing is, of course, when you try and keep your prices low at first and then increase them over time. Um, so clearly, the, the lower prices initially, well, you'd want to have a very sensitive demand to that. So you'd want it to be elastic. So statement one makes sense. Pre penetration pricing is more likely to be used if demand is sensitive, if demand is elastic. So statement one is true. On the other hand, statement two, let's look at that. So price skimming is more likely to be used if demand is price inelastic. Well, price skimming is when you start with a very high price, perhaps because you have some brand loyalty, and then over time you bring the prices down. So if we're thinking about the first part of that phase, well, that indicates prices going up, higher prices. So higher prices will make sense if your consumers are not very sensitive to high prices, and they are, of course, price inelastic. So therefore, statement two makes sense, which means the answer is A, unit four, A-level business. So read the question and pause the video. So the answer to this question is D, outsourcing is when you look to transfer a business process to another business. It might be because you want to focus on your core competencies. We'll move on to question two. So pause the video. So calculating capacity utilization, you want to look at the actual, the actual output, which is 45,700, and then the max possible they can do, which is 47,400, and just calculate that as a percentage. So 45,700 divided by 47,400 times by 100, and that brings you an answer of 96.4%. So the answer is D. D for Derek. Let's move on to question three. Read the question and pause the video. So you have capacity utilization that is reducing, reducing. So lowers the average unit cost. It can't be that because that is associated with higher capacity utilization and also increase the efficiency of the business. Well, that is also associated with higher capacity utilization. They're the virtues or the pros of having higher capacity utilization. So it's not A, it's not B. D is absolute nonsense. So C is remaining. And C allows for more maintenance and upkeeping of machinery. So C is the answer, C for Colin. Let's move on to question four. Read the question, pause the video. Okay, so for this question, the business has a reorder quantity of 90 units. And we can see that happened on day three, if we take a 120 and we take away 30, of course that's 90, so that was a correct day. But it looks like on day six, they didn't get 90 in because they got 60 in, being 90 minus 30 units. That happened on day six. 60 units, of course, that's an incorrect quantity that's ordered, but the lead time was one day, so it was ordered the day before. Day six, six minus one is five, so the answer is B, day five. Let's move on to question five. Read the question, pause the video. So for this question, we've got two statements. Statement one, labour productivity has increased between those two years. Well, labour productivity, if we look at the years, we look at number of employees and we look at output per unit, we can see that essentially each employee was generating 2.5 units of output, simply 50 divided by 20. And we can see in 2019, Output 100, employees 40, so again, each employee is generating 2.5 units of output, being 100 divided by 40. So that's actually stayed the same, it hasn't increased. Labour productivity has stayed the same. We look at the other statement, capacity utilisation, has it increased between the two years? Well, the actual output was 50 and the capacity was 100, so it's 50% in 2018. And in 2019, actual output 100, capacity that's max capacity, 200. Again, so the cap U, the capacity utilisation was 50%. It has stayed the same. It has not increased. So statement one is false. Statement two is false. That means the answer is... Let's put session AQA, unit five, A-level business. 
So read the question, pause the video. Okay, so the key thing for this question is gross profit. Formula for gross profit, sales revenue, takeaway, cost of sales. So of course, 150,000 takeaway, 90,000 is 60,000. Key thing is you don't take into account expenses here. You would need to do that if it's an operating profit that it's asking for. In this question, it's asking for gross profit. Answer to number one is then, of course, B, 60,000. Let's move on to question two. So pause the video, give it a read, give it a whirl. So total contribution. Total contribution is total revenue take away variable costs. If we look at 200 units on that chart, 200 units total revenue is at V, variable costs is at Y, VY is clearly the difference there, so the answer must be C. Let's move on to question three. Pause the video. Answer is, of course, A. A, because ingredients for the bagels are, of course, a variable cost. Salaries are, are treated as a fixed cost. Admin costs, fixed costs. Rent, fixed costs. So by deduction, has to be A. Three, A. So let's move on to question four. So question four, pause the video. Okay, so it's asking for you in this question for operating profit. Operating profit, you need to be thinking sales revenue, take away cost of sales, take away expenses. So that means the answer must be 150, take away 90, take away 20, thousand pounds. That leaves 40,000 pounds. Don't take away taxation. You would have to take away taxation if the question was asking for your profit for the year. But we're asking for your operating profit, so we don't deduct taxation. Answer is therefore, going to be A, £40,000. Let's move on to the last question. Pause the video. So, two statements. The first one, overdrafts. Yes, overdrafts are a short-term source of finance, so that is true. And statement two, debt factoring. Yes, debt factoring is also a short-term source of finance, so one is true, two is true. The answer is A, A. six A-level business. So, question one. Pause the video. Okay, the answer to this question is C, work council. Let's move on to question two. Pause the video. Hackman and Old Ham, autonomy is part of it, task variety is part of it, task significance is part of it. Therefore, the answer is A, autocratic management does not fit in with that model. Let's move on to question three. Pause the video. Okay, so the answer to this question is redeployment. Redeployment is when you will move an employee to a different job within its organization. Let's move on to question four. Pause the video. The answer to this question is A, trade union. So trade union is an organised collection of workers that aim to protect workers' rights and interests. Answer to question four is A. Question five, pause the video. So the two statements, statement one is false, very centralised, national retail business suggesting that decisions will be made at the top of that organisation, not at a local level. So statement one is false, but statement two is true, likely to be true, which means the answer is C. I hope you feel more confident now with those year one multiple choice questions. Remember you're going to see 15 across year one and year two of those multiple choice questions in paper one for AQA A level. Watch out for the numeracy playlist up there. Click the card up there. And other than that, the year two multiple choice playlist is coming very soon. See you at the next sesh.